Hi guys, this is Jonathan and Jackson with NJExperience.com. Today's topic is the classical technique unbendable arm. Um, so we're going to talk about it Japanese, uh, from a Japanese perspective, it could be called Kokinage, and also uh, Sokoma no Riminage. Both of those names uh, refer to the same technique. So starts, we're at my eye, and both of us are squared off in our stances. So in other words, we're not in a fighting stance. So, now, Uke's responsibility is to hang on. Now, I got a little gap for him in his, uh, uh, or, or let his grip to be weakened, but he has another responsibility that is historic in nature, and that is to provide uh, a push or a mechanism so that I cannot just push my, let, let me do it, so I cannot do that. Okay, uh, now we have a video that explains why they're trying, why Uke would be trying to do that. And basically, uh, it, it's him trying to keep me from drawing a sword, which we cover in uh, detail in another video. But that's his, he's trying to keep me uh, from coming in, okay? And, and this creates the reason to, to go around. And so our first step, I have the pressure here, I can't get in, so I'm just gonna go around. So you step in as you kind of cup, you know, kind of cup some water, this arm stays straight, you just kind of bend your wrist, and then step in, I said bent wrist, but you're not really bending your wrist, my wrist isn't bent. It's just like I'm kind of holding some water. Anyway, so you're in this stance. Now a couple of markers. Your heel should basically, be in line with your uke's heel, okay? And then you should be in a front stance and your hand, this should, hand should be up high like that underneath his chin when you get to this position. Um, so, okay, so we're here, so in, front stance, and that's, that's the, basically the first part of the technique. Now I wanna stop it right here before we actually do the technique and talk about the reasoning behind being in a front stance. Some of you may have been taught hami, you know, you should be in a hami stance when you get to this position. Now I wanna show you um, something. So we're here, when we get into this front stance, okay, first I'm gonna be in the hami. That's the way I was taught, and it makes a lot of sense that, you know, everything is kinda hami oriented, but, but, Mr. Bo's final teachings were that this was in a front stance, and there's a reason behind it. When I'm in a homie stance, my body is, my upper body is generally facing away from Uke at about a 45 degree angle, so when I try to push back, this is as far back as I can take my arm, okay? Now, if I will pivot my back foot into front stance, watch what that does with him. I'm not even gonna move my arm, I'm just gonna pivot my body. Now, that's another foot of movement, okay, and lead back. And so now when I step back, the throw is infinitely more powerful because I have so much more uh, back pressure on him. And so that is why when you get to here, you want to be in a front stance so that, so that when I open my chest up, he, see, he can't even keep his... I had done the technique and he's uh, recovered, bring it back. So when I bring that arm back, he's, he's just gone. Now, when I step back, I'm over here like this, right? When I step back, the timing of my hand hitting this thigh and the foot hitting the ground are the same. And it's like you're on a cable. So you're here and it's just boom. Okay, now, who gets down on the ground at that point? And now you're gonna step back two steps, one, two, to clear the area, okay? So if we did that again, we'll do it um, with the left hand. Uh, I think I've got enough space. So if we did that again it, in the, without stopping, it would look like this. And that would be the technique. So, Obviously, she and McEwen's videos are the videos that you want to be watching. Um, and this is just like a, a review for ngexperience.com uh, visitors as well as members of our dojo in Columbia and uh, the study group leaders. So, thanks for watching. 